Hey YouTube, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. In this video, we're going to learn everything about CSS you have to know to start working with it. Um, this is the part of the bigger series. So in the previous episode, we learned everything about HTML and this um, is the second movie and we're going to have many, many, many more. Uh, as you can see already, um, we have JavaScript um, and uh, this will consist of at least 10, probably even 20 videos when we're going to be learning a different uh, technologies in one single video. So if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And without further ado, let's get started and jump into CSS. Okay, so we'll keep our uh, our map open so we will know uh, what exactly uh, we will be learning. So we're going to go through the implementation first, um, then we'll talk a little bit about the syntax CSS. Then I'm going to tell you how to use selectors, so how to select a different element in our page or project. Uh, then we'll be talking about the layout, mm, so how to, how to build it, how does it work. And, and then we'll move to the properties, so how to adjust um, properties for different elements like, you know, fonts, colors, images, lists links, uh, forms, tables, and so on and so on. So uh, let's start with implementation. Um, I have an mm, empty folder here. I have some image here, which we're going to use uh, later on. So I'm going to open this in a, a Visual Studio Code. And uh, let's start with uh, creating first file. So first is implementation. So let's call it um, this way. Or actually even let's create a folder because uh, we're going to have different uh, files for different section. So implement I put it in one implementation. Okay, and inside this file, what we're gonna do, we're gonna uh, create index.html, uh, or maybe, uh, yeah, well, index will do. And um, yeah, I'm gonna type explanation mark and then hit tap. This is gonna create for me uh, this, um, this basic structure uh, of HTML. And now I'm gonna use um, live server. So uh, this is the extension for VS Code, which allows me to <coughs> open this, um, which allows me to open this uh, file in a browser, and it will automatically refresh it. So every time we type something here, uh, let's say hello world, it's gonna automatically refresh. So as soon as I'm saving file, it's refreshing our page on our behalf, so we don't have to go and refresh every time. Now, um, so if Regarding implementation, there are three ways we can implement CSS to our page. Um, so uh, the very first way, um, and not the best one, uh, but sometimes you have to use it, is so-called inline. So uh, uh, let's have we uh, let's assume we have some paragraph, and we have some uh, text here, inline text, or actually inline inline styles. So um, in order to apply styles to this one, we can use a uh, style attribute. So what we'll do with style equals, and now we can write our size. So let's say I'm going to use font size attribute, and I'm going to make it smaller. And now you can see that this becomes smaller. So this is this is very first uh, way. Uh, it's not the best one. It's not recommended, uh, but you have to know that something like this exists. Obviously, we can uh, we can change other attributes uh, attributes as well. So we can change color of it, for example, and more and more and more. Well, this is not um, why isn't this good? This is because um, if you use this for um, different mm, elements. So if you go to any page like mdbootstrap.com, let's say, and let's check uh, source code, you're gonna see that you have a lot of uh, elements over here, right? Like this, a lie and so on. So if we would have this um, and this, this styles over here, then let's assume that tomorrow we want to change this color from blue violet, uh, blue violet to something else. Then we have to go and update each and every element, which obviously isn't, isn't the best way to do so. Um, so yeah, that's why we don't use this. So what's the better way? Um, 
uh, the the better uh, option to this one to do it is uh, to use something called internal um, so uh, for the internal styles basically we will be using classes so we have internal and external for both we can use classes and id and different selectors um, the difference is that for internal we're gonna keep our class definition in the same file so um, let me show you what does it mean so i have another paragraph i'm gonna i'm gonna call it um, internal uh, styles and I'm gonna use class here class we're gonna learn about classes later on don't worry if you don't understand it um, and I'm gonna call it internal now with an uh, head of our uh, HTML I'm gonna open style tag and I'm gonna create this class definition so internal and I'm gonna set font size large okay Interal. I have a typo here and now we can see that this becomes bigger right um, and if we check in the inspector this is the tool from web browser which allows us to inspect elements so if we check this uh, internal you can see that this font size has been applied right if I switch it off it's changing its size uh, yeah. okay so uh, now uh, finally the last option and the best option is um, external so if I create paragraph again I'm gonna call it external styles and I'm also gonna use class here so I'm gonna do external but I'm gonna keep my my styles in the separate files now actually what I didn't I didn't tell you why this is better than this and worse than that so basically this is better than this one because we are using classes so technically we could have these paragraphs in the couple places or actually you know that doesn't have to necessarily be paragraph it could be I don't know it could be div right and um, if we change this to uh, small or x small then this will change all the elements so it's already better than uh, than inline styles right we just change it in the one place the problem obviously uh, appears when we uh, have when we have um, multiple files right and usually uh, big pages uh, big portals or, or, or projects they will have they will consist of more than one page so in that case you would have to um, you would have to go and um, uh, update uh, multiple files so it's better than internal but or inline but it's still uh, not the best idea so the what's the best idea is to have external style sheets so what we're gonna do I'm gonna create here within this folder I'm gonna create a new file I'm gonna call it styles CSS and um, styles I want it plural plural okay um now I'm gonna type my, my definition here so it's external and I'm gonna say font size larger or double large even and now what we have to do here and um, again in our head we have to link our file so uh, how to link the file i'm using uh, this, uh, this shortcut here but basically you type link rel style sheet ref and here you type um, path to your file so it's going to be something like styles css and now we can see that this immediately start working so let me let me do it again if we have wrong name here or we don't have it at all then it doesn't work but as soon as i provide a correct name styles css and save the file this is going to change look now oops Control save here look here yeah. and it's working fine now by the way one thing worth to mention is um, as you can see if you want to use internal styles you have to use the style attribute here opening and closing while if you use uh, separate file you don't have to use this attribute anymore you, you just write or type your styles directly into that file now since we covered installation uh, let's talk a little bit about the syntax so you've already seen how um, how we've been using this CSS so just to make for just to fulfill this picture let's um, let's have a look how does it work so basically all the CSS um, rules they consist of um, selector and the declaration so um, declaration consists um, of the property name 
like font size and property value. So um, basically, we will be writing a lot of um, a lot of rules, CSS rules over here. So we will be always using some uh, kind of selector. So we're gonna learn that in a few minutes. So let's say I wanted to change all the paragraphs, and then I have different declarations here. So I'm gonna have a property name. So I want property color to have value, let's say uh, green. And I can have another declaration, so I could have a font uh, size, and I can use some either predefined values, which you can already see here, like uh, literal, small, smaller, or, you, or I can use uh, some units, and we're gonna learn about units um, in a second. So this is uh, how the syntax works, and uh, you're gonna see that a lot in the coming mm, minutes within this video. Okay, let's see what what we have then. So we have implementation and syntax. Now let's move to now let's move to the selectors. So what I'm gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna quickly create a new folder here. Oh, I have an error here. Uh, why is? Because I didn't. Let's get rid of this. So uh, you could download these files at the end of this um, lesson. So uh, then we're gonna have selectors. Okay, and inside selectors, we now uh, we can distinguish different kind of selectors like tag, class, ID, multiple combinators, um, and so on. Um, so basically, we let's start with with just selectors, uh, and I'm gonna uh, and then we're gonna have some more so selectors HTML. Okay, um, and now uh, as far as selectors are concerned. Uh, you've already uh, seen some of uh, some of them. Uh, let's go to selectors HTML uh, and let's let's write here and let's open this. I'm gonna close this one. Um, let's call it selectors. So we know which one is it, and let's run it in the live server. Okay, so we have it here. Um, now, uh, let's create some uh, some text here. So some paragraph, uh, some div. Okay, I'll, I will be writing styles uh, here. So uh, you could see immediately uh, how does it work? Mm, so I'm gonna start with the um, with the we will do step back, right? So you've already seen that we've been using classes. You've seen that you can change paragraph, all the paragraphs. But uh, let's do one step back. So something you're gonna see uh, quite often is that you can start with the universal selector. So basically, this will mm, this will basically apply to every element on a page. So I'm using this asterisk, and then I can do something like color red. And as you can see, it's affecting like entire, entirely all elements uh, on the page. Um, why would you do so? Basically, uh, you, you use it to set up or reset, for example, margins. So we're going to learn about margins, but you want to make sure that all margins have zero. So you can see now, right? Let's change it here. Actually, let me resize these windows a little bit so you could see code better. Oh, not this one. I wanted this one. All right, so if I remove it, you can see that by default, uh, browser is adding some some margins here. So if you go to uh, developer tools, so if you go here, uh, settings, and then more tools, you have something like developer tools. And within this developer tools, you can scan your project. And if I just hover over this paragraph, you're going to see that uh, the browser this is user agent style sheet. So this is something which browser automatically adds to our code, even though we didn't add any CSS. So browser kind of, you know, try to assume um, or try to make it better. So it's adding some margins here, right? So you have margin, margin, margin. So now if you want to make sure that the browser doesn't affect it and we have want to have a full control of our code and CSS code and HTML, then what you do, you can, you can use um, this asterisk and you can set, uh, reset all margins to zero. Um, okay, so this is, um, so this is, this is a universal selector. Um, and by the way, I didn't mention that we, you can do comments in uh, CSS. So if you do like this, uh, so this is comment, right? So this part 
it's not parsed by browser. Uh, otherwise, it would, it would be just showing me some error that it's not correct CSS, obviously. Now let's move to something um, called simple selectors. And let's make it comment. Pardon my interruptions for a moment, I just wanted to let you know that besides this video, we also released a lot of different tutorials, especially you should check our Bootstrap 5 crash course, which we released recently. If you want to watch this video, you're gonna find the link somewhere over here or in the description down below. This is a perfect tutorial for the people who haven't used Bootstrap 5 or Bootstrap at all in the past, as well as for those who've been using Bootstrap for, for some previous projects and would like to know what has changed. And believe me, a lot has changed in newest Bootstrap 5. This video and this tutorial obviously is completely free for everyone. It's available on the YouTube. And if you would like to support us uh, to help us creating more tutorials and materials like this video and the Bootstrap 5 course, you should also try our MDB UI kit, which is available also for free as an open source. You're going to find a link to this project down below. So give it a try and I'm sure you're going to love it. Oh, you can even see now that this uh, color has changed here, so it doesn't match because this is an error. So if I fix it, it's, it's gone. So for the simple selectors, we have few of them. So the very first one is ID selector. So we can target a very specific um, element on the screen. So one thing you have to know about it is that um, uh, we uh, should have ID should be unique. So we should have only one element with a certain ID. So if I'm going to do here ID equals to Mm, title, then I shouldn't have another element mm, having this, uh, this, 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 the same title uh, again, because uh, this, this, this basically will, will uh, cause a lot of confusion and basically can lead you to a, an error uh, because ID is unique by default. So you shouldn't have the same elements here. So uh, you can have something like title or subtitle or whatsoever. And now um, if I'm going to go to CSS, uh, actually here, I can target this one using, uh, using syntax as follows. Um, so basically uh, we write a hash and then we write the ID. So it's title. And then we write our um, our uh, rule, so our declaration. So we have font size, for example, uh, larger. Okay, it's it's larger, maybe even double large, so we could see it better, right? Okay, so this style applies only to to a given ID. Um, so this is, this is you use it when you want to uh, use um, you want to target a very specific element. However, very often you want to reuse your uh, style. So let's say you want to have uh, you want to have some paragraph, um, and let's say I have lorem uh, twenty. So this is uh, I just generated twenty words, and then I will have some another paragraph uh, lorem. Uh, and I would like to adjust. I would like to adjust uh, these two paragraphs, right? So I have. Uh, I would like to have them uh, the same look and the same feel, but I don't want to update all paragraphs on the page. So I just want to use it for this too. So instead of finding out two different IDs um, and coming up with the different unique names, I can use class. Uh, and this is something which you're gonna use mostly in CSS. So we can do say class, and we can say um, I don't know grayish. Let's let's call it gray. Oh, let's let's use gray. So we want to have this paragraph uh, somehow grayish. Mm, so then we can create a selector starting with dot gray, mm, and then we can have something like background color, uh, something like gray. Okay, and uh, color white. So let's say this is our, this is how we want this paragraph to look like. Yeah. So this is this is how these two paragraphs are affected. And then obviously if you have another paragraph, um, new paragraph, then it's not going to be affected. So we are not messing up with um, you know, with the uh, with the uh, new paragraph, but. Now we can still use the element selector 
So as you know from the previous video, in HTML we have different elements. So we have like paragraphs, these, and, and so on, images. So we can also target all elements. So let's assume we want to have some, and we want to add some paddings here or margins between this because they are too close to each other. So then we can say, apply the styles to all paragraphs on the page. So I want to have margin, um, let's say top. I want to have it 20 pixels. So we'll have, uh, margin in between and let's add some padding let's say five pixels from each side so this will give us this nicer look okay now before we move on um, to the combinators let's also learn one uh, important thing um, we're going to learn about how to group your selector so let's have uh, another file for this one grouping html um, grouping And let's open this one in a browser. So we have it here. Um, so um, let's assume that um, sometimes uh, you want to have the same still applies to uh, different uh, elements. Mm, all right, actually, let me, let me share with this on an example. So let's say we have headings, heading one, and then we have heading two, and then we have heading three. Right, we have it here. Um, and let's imagine that we want to use some styles for it. And we want to have for H1, we want to have, um, let's say text, uh, text size uh, or text color, um, I don't know, green. No, it's not text color, by the way, it's color. So green and we want to have um, I don't know, font family um, courier uh, and now for some reason you want to use exactly the same or actually you want to have all your headings the same style right so you want to have all your headings um, like this so what would you do um, you would probably create all of them and then reuse the same styles but as you know in programming uh, there is this dry rule, right? The dry, uh, which stands for do not repeat yourself. So um, we shouldn't do it like this. Doesn't make sense to have um, all this, um, the same lines of code uh, copied uh, in a different places. Uh, and again, if you want to change color tomorrow, or something else, we need to change it in a couple of places. So what you can do instead, uh, you can do, you can group them. So basically you can, uh, with a comma, you can separate them. So you can say H1, h2 h3 i want you all to have the same style so let me now comment this out as you can see nothing has changed so this is still working this is this doesn't work it's commented out if i get rid of this one it's getting back to normal and now if i use it i'm just grouping so you can basically if you want to apply and then you can um one thing to remember is that you don't have to um you, you don't necessarily have to group the same uh, selector so you could have h1 h2 h3 and then comma comma and then for example some class and then uh, some id and that that will also do so you don't need to you don't need to use only the same uh, the same selectors here now let's move to combinators so a uh, real project use um, many css html elements and many um, uh, css rules so what you want to do you want to be as specific as uh, possible so now we're going to learn how to how to target very specifically uh, certain elements so you don't always um, you don't always uh, want or can add some class or target um, if you have some app which auto generates some contents for you it might might be a little bit more difficult to add class to each and every element so sometimes you want to uh, you want to use uh, different selectors which are going to help you to uh, target specific elements so let's start with descendant selector so descendant selector um, matches all elements they are descendants of the specified element so let me let me share it this here so we have this one we have a paragraph paragraph and a section here so basically different um, elements and we want to uh, we want all them to have a red color or red background doesn't matter so what you can do you can do like this diff and then p and then set background color to red 
So as you can see, um, although this P, this paragraph, is not uh, a direct child of this div, so this is what we are doing, saying here, right? Whenever you have a div and there is paragraph inside it, apply this styles. So this is this is the this is the descendant. So um, let's oops descendant selector and let's uh, leave comment here because things will get a little bit more complex in a second because we also have another option which is child selector so uh, what you want to do uh, for for the child selector um let's say you want to do uh, you want to do something like this uh, let's have uh, child I'm going to have div with child because I don't, I don't want to interfere with this one. Um, and then I want to have, um, I want to have uh, something like this. I want to have h2, uh, which is heading in the div. I want to have like four of three of them. And then I want to have section. And then I want to have h2 uh, heading, but not a child. Actually, yeah, so we have uh, uh, we have four divs, and now uh, what we can do? I want to do uh, div with class child, and then I want to have all the h two elements in it, and I want to to have background color green. So, as you can see, now only the direct child are affected. So this is not gonna be uh, that's not 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 gonna be um, affected. Okay, there are more combinators. Uh, so we can have, for example, for for siblings. So not necessarily for the for uh, for the children um, and uh, more complex ones, but just for the beginning uh, i think that's that's enough if you want to learn more just ch search for like sibling selectors or general sibling selectors so so le to, to learn more but this is these are rather rare cases so i'm just gonna leave you with this um piece of knowledge as the whole course about css it's gonna be um already a lot of information for you so uh, let's stop here and if you want to learn more i strongly encourage you to check our tutorials page uh, on at mdbootstrap.com you're gonna find the link in the description down below and there we are going through literally each and every possible um, CSS rule so you would have like a very comprehensive knowledge but for this video I'm just gonna stop here okay now let's learn about pseudo classes um, so pseudo classes basically um, are meant to uh, to target um, special state of uh, of a different elements so for example we can we can we can style um visited or unvisited links which i'm going to show you in a second um we can we can uh, change styles um of the element when we hover over uh, it with uh, with mouse as you can see here and this uh, this you can apply this to any element not only not necessarily to, to the links you can style env um, element, um, for example, in the list, um, or you can also uh, change style when something gets focused. So whenever you are, you know, whenever you are um, browsing through form, you are filling some form, then the the input which you are just filling at this very moment can have different styles. So let's have a look at this example. I have few. Uh, I have a bunch of links over here. So I have some 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 pages I've never been before. So uh, we can style we can style uh, them differently. As you can see. Uh, this selector looks um, as follows. So we have like A, but we could have, for example, I don't know, image and then hover, right? So and then we can style an image um, and we can define what we want to do, what kind of styles we want to apply when we hover over this image. Um, so uh, basically, um, so basically you use a colon. Uh, and then you define this special state. So um, you've already seen this one. So we have a, a link, so unvisited links, uh, we want them to be red. Then we have um, um, hover. So when we hover over, we want to have this, 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 this pinkish uh, color, right? Now, selected link. So if I click on it, but don't release it yet, 
then it becomes uh, this selected. So it's active at this very moment. And when I go to this page and then get back, oh, it does, doesn't work. So let me create some uh, existing one. Oh, I should do, I should do it like this. So if I go to page, oh, actually it even does exist some page that come and now come back. So now you can see that it's visited. So it's changed to green. And even though I click the very first link, still both of them uh, are, uh, are, they change color because they are having the same uh, URL, right? So you have this one. We're going to learn a little bit more also how to style these links uh, in a couple of minutes. So we, how to get rid of this, 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 this line at the bottom and so on. But uh, for now, let's move on. Uh, now let's move to uh, last, uh, first, and uh, ch child. So let's have uh, some unordered list, and then I want to have li items with, um, or actually, let's have um, order list, and then uh, let's have I don't know, ten um, inside it. So some item. So we have this. Oh, uh, okay. Let me use. Uh, multi-line selector. So I want to have some items here. Um, and what we can do now, uh, we can we can we can use um, selectors like this. So I want to have uh, li and I want to have, uh, for example, nth uh, or actually first, let's start with first child. And I want to have this to have uh, background color, let's say yellow. So as you can see, we are targeting only the first element. Obviously, you can do the same with the uh, last child, right? And we won't have this background colors blue or oh, blue violet. Let it be. Now, if you want to, um, now if you want to uh, match a specific element, so we can do li nth child and we then can specify for example five and we won't have this background color to I don't know what red we don't have red yet right and we can specify a specific a specific item and what we can do um, we can do something like this uh, li uh, nth child and then we can do like um, pl n plus seven. And let's see what's gonna happen now. A background color uh, cut it blue. So as you can see, we've got a uh, seventh and the following. We, also, we can also do um, the previous. Uh, so then we would do something like uh, minus, minus n plus five, that, that would be uh, from zero to five. Mm, so as you can see, there are, there are multiple options. By the way, this is something which I didn't uh, mention, but it's very important. As you can see, we uh, have now two, uh, we, we have two um, rules which try to uh, style this element. And if you open inspector, you're gonna see that finally, uh, the one which wins is either the one which is uh, below Right, which is which is which is which is below uh, or which is second. So first we have this this blue violet here, but then um, we are reading our code and then we are finding something uh, something uh, which is there again for this one. So then it's applying. Um, however, uh, it's also important that. Um, Within CSS rules, you have uh, this kind of importance. So if you, for example, try to change this via class and ID, then uh, regardless of the order where you put your code, uh, the ID will always win because it's more specific. So the more specific will basically win. Um, now, just to finish this part, let's also do uh, just just to let you know that you can do something like um, nth and you can define, for example, even numbers. So every even number will have background color of um, uh, coral, let's say, right? Um, okay, so uh, so that's it. Uh, now the last thing which I want to show you in this part is that you also have the pseudo elements called um, um, before 
and um, and after. So uh, long story short, this looks like the, in like like that. So this is our before. Here is the content, and then um, then it's, this is the after part. So uh, usually this is something which you put uh, manually uh, to to your div. This is the content, but we can we can do uh, we can add something before or after. So let's say I'm gonna get this like uh, content. So this is our content of the div, and what I can do, mm, I can specify a following rule that I want to have div before. By the way, I use double colon here, uh, content, and then I want to specify B4. So I'm able to add this before, and obviously I can do the same after. So this will add after, um, and you can use it, for example, to add some some counters here, right? So you could do some counters, some 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 you know uh, icons, or you could add some image. Uh, so you're gonna see that quite often uh, when it comes to CSS. Okay, and finally, the last um, thing which we want to learn about selectors in CSS um, are our um, attributes. Um, which can be also used to target our different elements. So what you can see over here, uh, we have some links, um, but some of them, they have this target attribute, right? So, you know, in HTML, you can have different kind of attributes. You can have a source, you can have a width or whatsoever. You can have a target. So links usually can have target. Mm, so what you can do with CSS, you can specify all, you can specify the element and then specific attribute, right? So you can have, I don't know, all the images which have some alternative text um, in it. And uh, if in case of links, we can, for example, uh, say that we want to only, um, uh, we want to mark all the links which will be open, um, which, which have this target. Now, uh, what's the difference? Uh, you can see here, we are applying this to on all uh, targets regardless of the value, right? So we're just saying that we want to uh, give yellow background to all links which have this target. Now, um, if you want to use a specific value here, it's obviously um, also possible you do something like this target equals to blank. So now we will want to tell our customer that, for example, this 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 link will open in a new window, right? So that's why uh, that's how we can get to the different values. So this is also nice um, nice way because um, then when you build some application, when you build some web page, and you will be adding some elements, you can have some uh, uh, data attributes, custom data attributes, uh, and then you can you can style them differently um, to show it in a different way. So you can have uh, styles predefined, and then you just add attribute to the HTML, and this will basically change the way it looks. Um, there are different options. So you could have like, you know, attributes which have some word in it or some letter, or they are starting with some value, which might be useful, but it's a little bit too complex. So again, I'm sending you to our uh, comprehensive tutorial, which is available at our page for free. Uh, but now I just want to show you another example. So um, let's uh, let's assume you have some form and we're going to be covering form later in this uh, video. So I just want to show you a uh, quick example, uh, because this is also related to um, to, uh, to a target. Um, so we have some form over here. And again, I'm just going to copy paste with some style which I predefined. So as you can see, we can style this input type text, right? So this is a very, very um, commonly used. So you're going to see it quite often um, that you would have form which has different kind of inputs, text, text boxes, text areas, and numbers, select, and so on. And you want to have uh, all your uh, text inputs so the the one which are accepting some input to look in a certain way um, okay so that's it for um, that's it for uh, selectors and we can move on to layouts okay so let's start our layout um, with uh, setting up height and width so this is quite a um, simple um, example so we have some div over here and obviously using CSS we can easily set uh, this div height and 
let's say 200 pixels and we're going to talk about the uh, units in a second and with 250% uh, with yeah uh, obviously you can't see it now nothing has changed um so let's add background color so you could see how the change how the size uh changes right so if we add this height and, and the width so basically you can use this one too uh to define the size of a different object mm, let's do some uh, other example max width so i'm gonna have another div here mm. and for this one we want to define and uh, we want to define also min and max uh, values because sometimes uh yeah we just want to ensure that the element doesn't go too big or too small uh, so uh, what can we do uh, and you know except for for uh, this one uh, which we already have here so uh max width Uh, we can define also a min width. Let's say 200 pixels and a max width, uh, 500 pixels, for example. And now if we def define our uh, width, which is percentage, right? It's 50%. So uh, as you can see, if I start to resize my window, it will behave differently, right? So, uh, it will basically always take uh, try to take 50%. However, it's not going to be smaller than um, than 200 pixels and not bigger than 500 pixels. And you can see it uh, if you do inspector. If we inspect this element, you can see its size. Hold on, let me this one. So it's 500, now it's 300, now it's 242, so let's make it uh, 300 here. So as you can see, now it's not, it's always 50%, however, it's not gonna make smaller because then on the mobile device, it will be too small for you to see it, and it's not gonna be bigger than 500 pixels, so uh, it's, it's behave differently um okay so that's about the height and width let's move to uh, let's move to units as we talked about them uh, for quite some time already so now let's briefly go through all of them so it's gonna be units and let's open this here okay and now as far as units are concerned we um can specify uh, different type of units. So CSS uh, uh, specify more of them, uh, a lot of them. And uh, well, I'm not going to go uh, through all of them because uh, some of them are not uh, that commonly used. These are some of them. Um, and again, you're going to have you're going to have uh, more examples in the full tutorial, which I encourage you to check on our website. For now, I just want to show you that uh, what, what's the main difference, right? So uh, let's have some paragraph here. Uh, let's actually do some lorem uh, 10, 10 words lorem ipsum. And now if let's use different classes here. So we have uh, CM, which specifies size in centimeters. Obviously, this is like tricky because uh, that, that centimeters looks differently depending on the screen and resolution. You could use millimeters, but then again, no one's using this. Uh, what you are usually using is uh, pixels, uh, right? So uh, it's uh, pixels, five pixels is quite small. Uh, pixels are, um, uh, will always have the same size, which is not necessarily good. Um, because uh, obviously if you have a big screen you want and you set it something to 500 pixels, then on a small device, like a mobile device, uh, it's going to be too huge, definitely. So that's why you should use more relative, um, more relative, um, um, units. So these are all absolute, right? So these are more absolute. We are not going to go into this. Uh, the other ones, uh, for you to remember, usually we use pixels when it comes to uh, that. And now let's move to uh, relative. So we have relatives. Um, so obviously, 
obviously the um, the easiest one would be percentage uh, so uh, let's add some paragraph here and now what you can do uh, we can define that our body for our body our font size the basic font size is 16 pixels 16 pixels which is default by the way and now for um, div we want to increase this font size size uh, to 150 percent so this will be relative to this one right if we change this one they both gonna adjust so you could use it however mm, more often what you're gonna see is either use of em um, or rem so so what's the difference em is relative to the font size of the of the uh, element so 2em means the size of the current uh, font two times size the current font uh, and the rem is relative to the root element uh, and this is actually what you're gonna uh, use uh, most of the time so uh, basically if you are having this uh, for example uh, font de defined for entire body or body or html then you would have uh, this relative to, to to that one and then you can um, simply use different font size using media queries we're gonna learn about that uh, later so you can define that on the big screen this font size is six, 16 pixels but on the smaller size it's gonna be like 14 pixels and then all these sizes uh, because obviously you can use it not only for uh, fonts but also for the elements will adjust accordingly to the to the to the main uh, font size so this this is this is the most common to use uh, RAM uh, you could use M as well but this is in, in relation to the element itself. Okay, so the other very often uh, use units are the one which are related to the viewport. We're gonna learn about viewport in a, um, in a second, but basically a viewport is the size of your of your screen. Uh, so you can have view width or view height. So 1% of your width or 1% of your height. So you very often gonna see something like this, background color, royal blue. So you can see this is the size. And then for the height, you can say, for example, that you want to have 50 view height. So it should take like 50% of available screen. So you will be using this often to have something, um, you know, taking the full width or the height, width or the height, of the uh, of the current screen, right? Which and the screen obviously will will vary depending on the uh, on the device you are browsing at. Okay, let's move forward, and now we will move uh, to a box model. Okay, now let's have a look at this example. So we have a board here, and we have some boxes. So let's um, let's do it like this: board, uh, and it's gonna have four hundred fifty pix pixels uh, with four hundred pixels. And then we're going to have our boxes and um, which each of the box will have width of 150 pixels and um, background color some grayish. Okay, and now I'm going to use float left. We're going to learn about it in a second about floating elements, but you can see that um, actually let's give this background color something like this. So uh, now you can see that this is the entire box uh, and the boxes are next to each other. Now if we add float, they are next to each other. Mm, now let's add some height as well. And um, let's see what's gonna happen if we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add the border to this, um, to this element. So mm, uh, as you can see, this is simple math, right? 450 pixels, so we can easily fit three. If we make it a little bit bigger, they're not gonna fit into each other, and they're just gonna uh, they they they're just gonna break into new line. So now they are working perfectly fine. We can we can fix them here, uh, but let's see what's gonna happen if we're gonna add border, uh, one pixel, just one pixel, solid black. So as you can see, it's already wrapping, and this is because we have width of uh, 150 pixels plus border. One, one, one pixel and one extra pixel. So uh, the, the, what does it mean? This means that when, when we calculate the entire width of the element, we are treating separately width uh, and the padding uh, and, and the border, right? So in order to change it, uh, so, make, so in order to make this calculation easier, we can change, um, we can control this using box sizing. 
um, and this box sizing by default uh, it has content box so this is what's happening right now but if we change it to um, border box or actually we should use it on this element so now this calculation will be different will be done differently you can see that now our width has changed to 148 and now um, and, and then it will um, it will have this one from the left and one from the right, which means that in total it has 150, which we which you gave it here. So using border uh, using border box or actually box sizing uh, property, you can define how um, browser will read this width or height and so on. So to sum up, um, talking about the box model, uh, you you have to keep in mind you have to understand that each and every element. In, uh, in CSS, in HTML, consists of the content itself, so this is our content, padding, uh, which we have here, padding, border, and then margin, and there are different ways to calculate it. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the next section, which where we're going to discuss more about floats. Sometimes if you have few elements next to each other, like here, we're going to have image and some paragraph, um, you can see that... Um, it's actually next to each other, but uh, you may want to you may want this text to 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 float around this picture uh, or this logo in this uh, in this example. In CSS, you can you can easily do uh, that. So you can uh, add following style. So for the image, you can say that I want you want this to float from the left side. So now, as you can see, our content will basically flow around this image which gives you this 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 nice element however this also might um can make a lot of confusion because as you can see this is kind of um and this is kind of uh, generic because now even the second paragraph is floating right so you can imagine that you could have some table over here or some other content which you don't want to float uh, around um, this one. So uh, if you don't want to do it, uh, if you don't want to float this element, you need to uh, specify, you need to clear basically this, um, this uh, float. And this is something very important to remember that every time you start using float, obviously we could, we could have it right right so that it will be floating from the right so this is usually use this when you try to set two elements next to each other so you can have float left float right but you need to keep in mind that this will affect all mm, all, all, all the following elements so um, the, the rule is uh, that if you want to make sure that the following elements in my in, in my case this is this paragraph uh, not gonna float you don't want them to float you need to clear so every time you use float for example left you have to clear the same side right and so now we use clear uh, we are floating to the left but clear right and it doesn't work obviously so we need to clear the same or it's safer just to use both and this will always clear in the both directions. So this, this is something to keep in mind. Mm. Okay, let's have a look at the at the at the, uh, at the next example. Um, so uh, let's have some div here. Uh, let's call it overflow. And then let's have some uh, lorem I don't know, 50 words. And now for this overflow, let's define the following with 200 pixel uh, height to 50 pixels. So we are basically making our uh, making our uh, div smaller than the than the, the size the content we are trying to put into. And to show you that, let's add background color to Oh, so you can see it, so let's use spring green, right? So you can now clearly see that this is the size of our div and this this uh, this uh, content is basically overflowing. It's going uh, outside the our, um, our uh, container. So if you want to control this one, you can use uh, overflow, um, overflow property which accept few parameters so um, obviously um, you can do something like this so if you use hidden then no matter what uh, it will just cut 
everything which goes at outside and sometimes it's a good solution uh, you want you might to want to leave it to the browser so it will try to do it automatically so in this case it used scroll you can also specify that you want to have this scroll um, and then you that this allows you to option this gives you the option to scroll in the above direction in case in case of text it can wrap it up but if, if you would have image here which is bigger then we could also have scroll in 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 both uh, direction directions or obviously you can have it visible so then you are saying that okay I'm fine with with um, overflowing this now um, how can you use it? how can you use it um, how can you use uh, uh, this flow uh, in different examples? So we can have this three boxes and some box one, box two, box three. And um, oh, uh, let's get let's change this overflow to hidden. Okay, so we have these boxes here. Uh, and now you can use this this float which we just used before to set width to 33 percent um background color something like this and then float left okay so now you can see uh you can see that this is uh, this uh this this allows you to create this um this this uh different um layouts using float mm, now this keep in mind what we already learned learned before if you add border uh let's say five pixels solid black the last element will not fit into it so we need to obviously we need to uh, remember to uh, change its um, border box sizing so now when we do border box now this this uh, border will be calculated into the entire width right so this is something which we learned uh, already in the previous lesson okay let's uh, move uh, further what we have now uh, floats so now let's talk about position okay now let's talk a little bit about the positioning which is a very important part of css so uh, let's have a look at the following example so we have some box and we have some uh, headings inside this box this is uh, we have margin um, set to auto and by the way setting uh, margin left and right to auto will center your element which you can see already here um, and now let's do let's do, let's do the following let's try to uh, position our h1 uh, using top 20 pixel so basically you want this 20 pixel from the top and it doesn't work mm, now in order to kind of fix it we can set this position to episode so if you want to use top bottom left right you need to you need to have also corresponding position set correctly so let's set it to absolute and now see what's what's happening so in our h1 is going outside our parent and this is because um, this 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 this, this uh, element is positioned relatively to the nearest positioned ancestor uh, and in our case this is body so so now it kind of omits box and it's it's going to the body and it's taking this this 20 uh this, this this 20 pixels from body if you want to change it and if you want to uh, you know move around with an our our uh, parent we need to add position relative to our um, to our uh, wrapper right to the container itself and now we can position this like 20 20 uh, pixel from top or even from the bottom uh, so this allows you to uh, position your elements very precisely within uh, within uh, within this element, and they will always stick to to the to the to the to the parent uh, itself. Um, 
However, this absolute positioning is a little bit tricky and usually you don't want to do it. So keep in mind to use it only in the, uh, when you really know how to, uh, how to, how to use it. Um, now the other option is that you can, let's say H2, let's set position relative. And then you can also do something like left 50 pixel. So this, uh, this, uh, so this will position uh, element relatively to its normal po normal position. So now, if we don't want to have this box like this, right? Uh, so we uh, remember th that we added this position relative here just for this H1 to work. Now, if I'm getting rid of this, this H1 is. Um, is uh, positioning itself to the nearest position and ancestor, which is body in our case. So now it's it's positioned to to the to the uh, to the body, and all the elements by default don't have it. So basically, relative uh, position it's within the element, and absolute uh, will kind of do it uh, absolutely. Let's move to the fixed, so that give you the whole, um, that will give you the uh, the whole image. So let's have some button. Uh, fixed. Uh, oops. Oh, actually, I want to do it here. So button fixed. Um, click me. So now it's here, and uh, let's now add this fixed um, position fixed, and this position we want to have. Let's say left. Um, all right, zero pixels, and uh, yeah, and let's leave it. And now I will just make my window smaller, so you could see that. As you can see, now this is the difference between position absolute and relative. This, this, this all. This is this is. Uh, this hello is is always absolutely positioned here to the window, and this is fixed, so it always remains in the same position, right? Regardless of the window size. So even if the window is too small, it will just wait there down below until I make the window big enough to see it. So um, this is this is these are the difference. So this is the relative to the parent. This is absolute, and this is fixed. Okay, and the last one uh, uh, to remember is sticky. Um, so I'm sticky, and this um, this is um, positioned uh, based on the user scroll. So let me show you the example. Sticky. So let's have it position sticky bottom zero. Um, bottom zero. Uh, let's make it smaller, and then we have uh, background color gray. Okay, and now if we scroll, as you can see, it sticks to the bottom of the window. So this is the last one to remember. Okay, now let's move on. So we just uh, finished uh, layouts, so we can move to the next one, which are properties. So we're going to learn about different properties uh, for fonts, colors, images, list, and so on. So um, yeah, let's move on. Okay, so here we have some sample form with some inputs um, and the text area. So let's quickly see how we can uh, how we can style this. Mm, so obviously we can um, style uh, all inputs at once. So we could do like with um 100 percent um we could do um let's add some paddings let's say 12 pixels and 20 pixels and what else we can do let's do um border radius so this will have this nice um nice um border corners um so this is one way obviously as you already know uh from the selector part we can do uh, we can style uh, more specifically so we can say type for example text 
So then it will apply only to the first one because this text, then we have tell, then we have email. So this one, um, these are predefined um, numbers uh, or actually input types, which allows, which makes um, validation easier. So for example, if you if you use type email and then you do submit, um, this will and uh, this will uh, the browser will tell you, for example, that this one is required. If we type something here then it should say that yeah this is not an email so that's why you should use this predefined mm, options so uh, we're not going to go much into details uh, for this one uh, what you what you need to know is that you can easily style it and create really fabulous um, effects so just just search for uh, how to style the contact form mm, and you're going to find a lot of different uh, options uh, so we can change uh, borders we can change we can color them mm, now, what is interest, uh, interesting is that, um, or important actually to know, is that if we do input uh, type text, and then we can use uh, focus. So, and let's change background color to something like light blue. And actually, you know, let's do it for all of them. So I could show you the result. So now when I focus on it, it's getting this uh, this nice uh, background color. So if I'm when I'm tabbing, uh, you can see that it's changing. So you can easily which one is uh, it's focused. Then we have a text area over here. So obviously you can you can you can also do the same with the text area. For the text area, we can um, also add size. Um, we can also add some sizes. Uh, Mm, and that can be controlled by CSS. Uh, and now let's focus on the button. So we have this button here. So we have a button, a submit button, but actually let's do it differently. Let's do it input. And then let's do type uh, submit. So this is how would you usually do input type. So this is going to change and then you don't use it like this. You would have a value, uh, submit me. So this will change this one. And I just want to show you that you can um, create very uh, different, very different uh, styles for submitting a button actually this is okay so I, I found an error because i copied paste this one from my uh, previous notes and there is some odd character here at the beginning so if i remove it we can see that we are getting this uh, you, we are getting this uh, this error here so let me remove it also here and now uh, we have the submit uh, ch change color and color white let's change it to something darker and now we can st style it like this mm. and you can also have uh, these effects uh, when you hover over i just want you uh, to show a few examples of different kind of buttons um, so you can even style button to look like the keyboard uh, or or to have some animations like this one. So there are really, really numerous options, and but these are more advanced. And just for the beginning, I think it's uh, good to start with the basic ones and along you uh, start building more advanced application, then you will go um, to more advanced examples. Okay, so that's it for forms. Uh, so you can technically uh, change your forms to look uh, very different from the from the basic HTML. And let's move to the remaining parts. So we're going to talk about display, viewports, media queries, variables, functions. We're also going to talk about flex. Uh, so uh, let's jump into it. OK, so let's start with the display property, which is um, one of the most commonly used property. Uh, so you already know from the previous um, video, our tutorial HTML in one video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, check the link in the description down below um, that the HTML has like two uh, type of elements. You have block 
level elements and inline um, elements. And by default, divs are block level elements. So as you can see, although we have them next to each other, um, then they will uh, still start from the new line. And on, this, um, on the other hand, spans, for example, are inline um, elements. So they are always next to each other. Mm, however, we can, we can affect this behavior. Um, one thing to mention here, for the block level elements, we can set width and height. However, for the inline elements, we, it doesn't work, right? So we set width and height mm, to 150 pixels, but basically it, it, it's not getting affected. And this is because this inline element. Now, most often you're gonna use display uh, to hide something. So if, you, if we set it to none, then basically it's gonna disappear from our uh, page. So this is uh, something which you usually do, but I want to show you something else. Mm. I want to show you that you can change um, behavior of um, of, uh, of your object depending on uh, your display property. So um, if you decided to change it to inline, now our div will behave like an uh, like a span, like an inline element. So uh, we cannot set width and height, uh, or actually, yeah, well, they will not get affected. And the same applies to span. So if we change display to block, they will start acting like a block level element. Um, there is something else. Um, if you want to have uh, like combination of both, so you still want to have like deep inline, so next to each other, um, there is property called, or actually this value, which you can use, it's called inline block. And this will kind of mix both. So they will be still um, kind of block because you can set width and height and inline because you can put them next to each other. Okay, now let's move to viewports. Okay, so as far as a viewport is concerned, um, viewport is the user's visible area of a web page. So let me show you this on the example. Um, as you might notice, uh, when you generate a new um, template uh, from Emmet, like we've been doing in this tutorial, it's already automatically giving you this, um, this viewport um, here by default. So uh, let's check what's going to uh, happen if we uh, if we remove this one, right? So I'm removing this and nothing actually happens on the, on the desktop view. But now when we switch to the mobile view, which is a, which is available to you, thank you web, uh, thanks to web developer tools, you can see that, uh, well, this it's showing us exactly the same view as we've seen on the desktop device, right? So we have a we have a logo over here and then quite um, quite um, wide paragraph, and then it's just kind of you know narrowing this down. But now if we uh, add this viewport you can see that our uh, screen, our image is actually behaving differently because now it uses, uh, it kind of knows what area it can use. Um, so it will adjust the image correspondingly. So uh, without, hoeing, without going much into details, basically the viewports varies with the device and it will, it's gonna be smaller on the smaller device and bigger on the computer screen. So before tablets and mobile phones, uh, web pages were um, designed only for the computer screens. And it was common for uh, web pages to have a static design and, and, and fixed size for the entire page. Uh, then we start surfing that on the mobile phone, tablet, uh, and so on. Yeah, so the fixed size uh, were just too big and uh, too large for 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 the screens, so that's how this viewport came into into existence. Uh, so without mo going much more into detail, basically you always need to remember that you should set it. You can keep it by default. Um, so it will basically use as a width of your page, it will just use width of the device. So if the width of the iPhone is 400 pixels, it will use it as a uh, as a starting point and then it will adjust everything on your page. So basically keep in mind to use and set viewport because otherwise you're gonna, uh, for example, your media queries may not work. And talking about media queries, let's move now. Let's jump into media queries, which is our next subject. So as we already mentioned um, before, we've been using just desktop and laptops and now most of the traffic actually happens on the mobile devices. So uh, so the web browser had to adjust and the way we are building websites had to adjust. So um, the, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to, to, to create something which, is, which will look good for both um, desktop and a small device. So um, 
one way to deal with that, or actually the best way to deal with that, which we have uh, now in the CSS, are media queries. So media queries allows us to set a different set of rules for different um, devices. For example, you can, you can specify that by, for example, your screen size. There are, there are more advanced rules, so you can this set it by a display type, de device type, um, viewport, orientation, so we can have different styles for uh, horizontal, and vertical, right? So for the horizontal, if we, if we keep phone like this, uh, we can have different styles. And if we, cop, if, we, if, we, if we keep the phone like that, we can also use different styles for that. So this is very handy because obviously uh, our space um, looks differently. With the desktop, usually you don't, you, don't, you don't rotate your screen, which is a typical case for the mobile phone. Without going much into details, because that's what we covered um, very, uh, very, very uh, detailed uh, in um, tutorial, I just want to give a sense of what you can do with CSS and how to do it. So this is an example of the media query. So basically, uh, media uh, only screen and max with uh, 600 pixels. So basically, we want to adjust this CSS style only on the screen with the 600 pixels um, maximum width. And what we want to do, we want to change uh, our background color of uh, body to the light blue. So now let's have a look at this. I'm going to uh, switch it or we can already see it. Uh, I wanted to show it a little bit differently, but I wanted to show you uh, like this. So you can see here uh, in the top right corner, you can see the actual size of our uh, of our viewport right now. So it's 980 pixels. And now look what's going to happen if we reach this 600 uh, pixel, uh, which is set here, right? So as soon as our uh, screen size um, becomes smaller than that, all of a sudden, this CSS rule jumps and become effective. So now you can imagine that you can easily um, that you can easily uh, create, for example, different different layouts um, for the mobile devices, right? So if you have screen like this, you can have um, you know. Let me show you this on that example. So if you have a screen huge screen, you can have this like side navigation and then top navigation and a lot of space, but when when this becomes smaller like uh, let's do, let's open this on the mobile device now we can just hide this left sidebar because well uh, it's it's too, there is no space for it right so you can you can simply hide it and then you can you can just give options to to show it uh, from uh, from from the from the side of the of the screen so um yeah to summarize basically this media queries allows us to um, to create different rules for different uh, screens and this how you can create a single page for which looks great uh, at all devices now let's jump into variables so all those cases is that actually a programming languages it also supports variable and it's very very handy so um, uh, we can use variables in CSS like you would be doing this in any other programming language um, so uh, what this allows you to do it allows you to define a single variable once we have this variable here color uh, so you define it um, with the following syntax so we have this uh, uh, colon root and then mm, and then we define names of the variables it could be anything uh, i could just call it abc for example and uh, then you can use it then you are using this in the code like that so var and then color um, so what it does it allows you to change this um, at once right so um, this for example allows you to create a set of colors for your page so you can have like primary color a secondary color and so on and so on and then easily change mm, this color for all, all the elements because you will be using this color um, this variable in the different places uh, in the you know for for giving some backgrounds colors some borders whatsoever in multiple places and then if you decide that you want to change it you change it only in the one place like here and it will adjust all the elements which are using this variable. Okay, so let's talk about flex now. And flex is so important part of CSS that we have dedicated video only about flex. And I strongly encourage you to check this one. Um, obviously, you're gonna find this link in the description down below. Uh, flex is very, very important. Uh, so um, let me give you just some some scent. I'm gonna give you some examples on what it does, how you can use it. But what's the story behind flex? So 
basically before flags it was very difficult um, to solve some very common issues for example like to align items um, uh, vertically um, and that was because different browsers were interpreting their different css rules um, as they wanted so there were there were there were no common understanding in in in, in, um, in the way uh, the rules are displayed on the screen and that caused a lot of issues so we had for example this uh, you know the the same rule has to be rewritten a couple of times uh, w specifically for a specific browser so that was really pain in the ass and now when flex uh, was introduced it solved a lot of issue with css so that's why it's very very important uh, for you to understand and start using it so i'm going to show you a few examples uh, with uh, what flex allows you to do and how easily thanks to flex you can cr create uh, the full layouts so let's start with a very, very basic example so let's just justify this uh, this content to the center right so let's align it to the center so you can do it using flex you can just set display to flex and then do justify content center um, that's quite easy and that was easy also before because you could just you could just do text align or you could just use margin out and it was doing pretty much the same but now let's see what happens if we're gonna uh, add height to the container so i'm gonna set height to 600 pixels and now that was tricky how to get this div aligned perfectly in the middle so there were options with position absolute cal calculation like 50 percent of the screen and so on but with flex only thing you have to do is just align items center and this will basically do um, the job right there are many different options so you can do a uh, flex and and you can easily as you can see position this in different places and you can also use property like place items and then it will just uh, get two arguments so you can say like top left corner and it will start from top left or bottom bottom right so there are a lot of them and uh, we're not gonna go through all of them i just want to show you two more things which are very interesting about flex mm, so um, what flex uh, allows you also to do is you can set direction for flex so if you set it to columns then all of the sudden your all the elements so or our divs um, in this particular case but that could be anything will change and start showing as a columns if you want to change it to row you can set it to row or just leave it by default because that's uh, that's that's uh, what's the default value the other option is flex wrap so uh, if you say no wrap then your content will never wrap it will never wrap it, it will it will just shrink but if you set it to wrap then you have kind of responsive design already because it will just adjust to the screen size so as i said flex is very 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 important part of the web development and i strongly encourage you to check this dedicated tutorial only on flex because you have to master it if you want to become a front-end developer okay guys thank you very much for watching thank you that you stayed so long with me if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask them down below in the comments or to join our facebook group and uh, post them there so we've done quite a lot and as you can see we cover almost almost um, everything in css obviously with every single element you can go much deeper and deeper and that's uh, that's why we prepared the uh, entire course on this which is free for you so just find the link in the description down below and and go through it it's it's free of charge uh, it's for you and if you don't want to miss next videos like this where we'll be covering uh, other subjects like javascript like ajax like dom and so on like uh, window object um and basically everything you can find on this uh, web developer roadmap don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notification on so you never miss next video like this we also have other series uh where we are creating games using javascript uh we also have other where we are talking about some tricks um, and most common errors so i strongly encourage you to check our channel um, and yeah thank you for watching and see you in the next video